Hi there everyone, welcome to another one of my album reviews, and this one, this one, is going to get a little bit political for like the first two minutes. First off, we are talking about Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Class of 2022 Induction. Fucking Eminem, come on! I mean, like, literally... BS, for starters, okay? So, the role of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is it's supposed to be 20, I believe 25 years from your first album release. Now, based off of that, I believe there might be one album before this one. I'm not a big Eminem fan, but this is the first Eminem album I knew. This is the first one that I think everybody I knew knew. And this was released in 99, according to the back here. So, if we go by that, really feels like Eminem got in a little bit early, doesn't it? Not to mention Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Rap Hip Hop. I, I basically, I've given up on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because of all the hip-hop. Like, basically, the second Madonna got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I was done. Uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame doesn't mean anything anymore. It's not about a celebration of rock and roll. It's about whatever they can do to make money to throw these parties and pat everybody on the back for bullshit reasons. Um, okay. That being said, does Eminem deserve to be recognized for his contributions to rap and hip-hop? Most definitely. Without a doubt. You know, everybody else who got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, do they deserve it as well? Yes, most definitely. Without a doubt. Just not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, they all should be in like rap, hip-hop, pop, whatever. A pop Hall of Fame. Let's call it a pop Hall of Fame. There, there's no point in calling it a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame anymore because it has nothing to do with rock and roll anymore. Okay. Going way the hell off topic. And I said it was only going to be two minutes. I haven't gotten to the second part yet. Okay, second part. You're going to find that I do very little rap reviews and very little hip-hop reviews and anything like that. Basically, I don't buy anything that uses the N-word. Okay, yes, I own a few albums that where the N-word can be found on it. Okay, I'm not even going to try and lie. But, typically, I, I, I'm not a rap fan to start with, okay, regardless of anything. But, if I can't sing the songs... Why the hell would I buy the albums? If I'm not supposed to sit in my car and sing along with the lyrics, well, you know, drive on, well, not that I drive, but if I'm in the car with somebody else and, you know, hip hop comes on and I can't sing certain words, what the hell is the point? Eminem is safe. I can sing the whole thing through. There's no nasty little N words. <laughs> All right. All right. All that over, done with, three minutes in. Sorry about that. Let's get on to the music itself. Okay. Track one, public service announcement. Uh, funny little intro, sets the tone, lets you know that this album is both going to be humorous and angry. Little Angry Bird. Okay. Uh, that gets into the song that, as far as I am concerned, or as far as I know, have introduced the world to Eminem and made Eminem a household name. And that is, my name is. Hi, my name is. Hi, my name is. Hey, my name is. You know, you know how it goes. <laughs> so, do I need to say anything else about this song? No. All right, after that, we get into Guilty Conscience. Okay. I love the whole angel, devil on the shoulder kind of aspect of this song. I think it's really cool. Uh, Eminem and Dr. Dre, you know, going back and forth doing the hip hop thing. Um, even more, I kind of like the little cuts and breaks it does for the little intros to kind of each verse, which is really kind of cool and interesting um, because I honestly, the first time I ever heard the song was the music video. So I honestly thought it was done specifically for the music video. I didn't realize it was actually done for the album. I shouldn't mention, I've never actually listened to this album until recently. So, you know, okay. Um, now, uh, 
this is probably my favorite song on the album for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, the piano riff and the bass riff, basically that do 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 do. Okay, so it's not quite like that, but that's how I'm gonna present it here. Um, the bass riff when my band used to uh, be a regular um, the house band for a bar that we played at. We, I used to, when we would switch out instruments and take breaks and whatnot, um, I would naturally jump from drums to bass. And this used to be my favorite little warm up riff, just sitting there. And my buddy Drew, he, he would go off the guitar and go on the drums, and he'd kind of, you know, do the drum beat as well. And it was just kind of a fun way to screw around. Nobody knew the lyrics, though. And to be completely honest, when I used to practice with this riff, I didn't realize this is what I was playing. I just used to screw around and try and figure out what the hell it was I was playing. Uh, the piano riff used to be my left hand practice riff for when I was warming up on the piano, you know, because basically you can play the whole thing, thing on your left hand on the low end. And it's a simple chord formation. It was just really kind of fun to do. And I really can't remember what it is off the top of my head because I haven't done it in years. Uh, this is one of those songs where if I honestly had a piano in my head, like a quality piano or an organ in my house, I actually would have taken the time to take five seconds to re reteach myself how to do it so I could actually show you guys. It's, it's, it's a fun little riff. The problem is, is you can tell it's a sample because it doesn't change the whole damn way through. Um, all right, then we're going to move on. Uh, brain damage, great mix of humor and anger. This is all related to bullying in days of school and whatnot. And, you know, getting no help from anyone, including teachers or whatever. I actually have a lot of, um, I have a lot of connection to this song due to how much I got bullied when I was a kid. So, you know, I kind of get it. Um, this one hits a little close to home for me, but it still makes me chuckle at it. Paul, this one, to me, there's really no point to this one. It's just space filler. Um, there's a few of these on here. They're calls or I don't know if they're actual calls or they're supposed to be calls or if they're fake calls or what they are. I'm just not a fan because there's a few of them. Uh, if I had, okay, nice slower song. This one's actually a combination of spoken word poetry and hip hop, you know, um, I personally, I find the song a little bit boring myself, but I can see how many people would actually enjoy this one as, because the only reason I find it boring is it's a slower song, right? <sighs> then we get into what I deem the literal most controversial song on this album, uh, 97 Bonnie and Clyde. Well, there are a lot of humorous parts of this song. Um, the idea of deleting one's wife or girlfriend is not a new concept. Jimi Hendrix, hey Joe, you know, like 30 years before this. So, you know, no big deal there, kind of, sort of. I mean, spousal violence is never the answer, let's be very clear. But, you know, sometimes you just got to write a song about it because that's just kind of how the woman makes you feel, right? Just like, you know, there's songs like, you know, the Dixie Chicks, uh, Goodbye Earl. You know, it goes both ways. So that that's not where my issue is with this one. My issue with this one is Haley being included in the lyrics. And the idea that Haley is actually there while this whole entire story is happening, I got issues with that. Um, most of the song really has this great kind of vibe to it and this great kind of story to it and whatnot, except for that part. I really, if Haley wasn't included in this, I'd have no issues with it because the idea that a kid is there through a whole entire deletion and disposal process that's pretty freaking traumatizing for that kid, man. Like, literally, that was, you know... That's how you breed serial killers. <sighs> okay. Um, then that goes into Bitch. Uh, this is a little funnier than Paul, but still pretty much pointless. Uh, and then goes into Roll Model. Now, the telephone things, they're kind of supposed to roll into the next tracks a little. They really don't, for the most part. One or two of them get close... Bitch gets a little close going into role model, but not that great. I, I, I think it's stretching it a little. Uh, role model. At this point in the album, um, I start honestly tuning out a little bit. Uh, the beats are getting a little boring and repetitive to me. Uh, I'm not... Most of the album is honestly around the same tempo. I want to say probably... Probably... 
it's either a slower uh, a slower uh, note rate or a slower tempo with higher note ratio or it's a slower tempo or I mean a higher tempo with a slower note ratio. Uh, meaning I'm not a hundred percent sure if the whole album's up in around the 120 zone or if it's like in the 90 ish zone, but using quicker notes, you know, using more eighth notes instead of using quarter notes, that kind of idea. Uh, but it, it, it does, like, it really, at this point, you know, Bonnie, the 97 Bonnie and Clyde has slightly different tempo to it, but not a whole lot off. Uh, if I had would be the biggest kind of tempo change in there so far, and that one kind of bored me. Um, lyrically, it's basically just an angry white boy not wanting to be a role model. Or not even saying that, you know, he's not a role model or, or shouldn't be classified as a role model or, you know, he doesn't want to, you know, basically just doesn't want to be a role model. You know, no one should be looking at him as a role model kind of thing. After that, we get into Lounge. Lounge is another space killer, but this one actually feels more like a proper lead into the next track. Uh, lounge is not a phone call. It's literally, it sounds like the guy's screwing around in a lounge. In a lounge. Got, one guy's got a guitar. Everybody else is just kind of putzing around. They're having a little fun with it. And that runs into the song My Fault. And it runs into the song My Fault brilliantly. I actually work. It's kind of a nice intro. Um, the difference being, like I said, one's just kind of screwing around in a lounge with a guitar. When you get to My Fault, it actually changes into this nice regular hip-hop kind of thing. It's got a little bit of a Latin motif, which is kind of nice. really works in here. The only downside is, um, like I said, I only recently heard this album the whole way through for the first time. Not just the singles. And... Because of that, I've heard so many other Eminem songs before this, including, you know, uh, D12, right? And the song my band from D12, the little end part, my salsa, that really kind of feels like it's almost the exact same as what was used on this one. Uh, so there's kind of definitely a lack of originality kind of vibe kind of for me going on. Uh, however... I do like the story about the using the magic mushrooms, even with some of the less enjoyable lyrics in here about um, a father mouth violating a daughter. You know, uh, not a great topic, but in the context of the song, you don't know if it's actually a real thing or not, because, you know, it's a whole song about, you know, someone taking too many magic mushrooms. So, you know, it could go kind of a few different ways. Um, Ken Kniff. This is another completely useless, pointless filler. Uh, come on, everybody. Okay, so this is not spelt as in the come in my store kind of come. This is the come as in a ejaculation. Uh, this one's got a great funk vibe to it. Lyrically, it's not much different than anything else on the album so far. And it does get to a point where it honestly gets a little bit repetitive with the come on, everybody, go to party or whatever the hell he says. It, it gets, it bugs me uh, by the end of it. Uh, Rock Bottom. This sounds exactly what you'd expect a song called Rock Bottom to sound like, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, not like Kiss is Rock Bottom, but more of a slower... I, I hate to say country-esque kind of rock bottom, but it's got kind of more, you know, country singer talking about rock bottom than, you know, Kiss singing about rock bottom. Either way, it sounds like a song about rock bottom. Uh, Just Don't Give a Fuck is next. Okay. So this one... First off, songs about not giving a fuck or giving the big finger or whatever. Basically, you can think of this kind of as a get in the ring, you know, from GNR. And... I mean, when I played in my band, various incarnations, we, we played, thanks to my buddy Drew writing a song called I Don't Give a Fuck. We played it in various incarnations over the years in various band, various versions of our band. And I love playing it, but it's basically, and the, we, Drew had wrote that years before this had ever come out. It was basically the same idea. It's, you know, talking shit and not giving a fuck about it. Um, 
the only difference is, you know, this just don't give a fuck is a lot more violent <laughs> than my buddy Drew's lyrics were. Um, that goes into Soap. This is more filler, but at least makes sense going into the next track, which is As the World Turns. Uh, the bass riff on this one is super familiar, uh, like kind of the whole kind of music vibe to it is super familiar, but the problem is I can't think of what song it was it reminds me of. I, mean, I listened to it like three, four times in a row and I can even sing the melody, um, cause it's not the exact same, but it's really damn close. And I want to say it's something eighties new wave. I want to go tears for fears or maybe Depeche mode or I'm not somewhere in there. I, I not sure. It's not bad. Uh, that's followed up by I'm shady music. This is a bit funky. And when I say funky, I mean, actually, you know, like funk, uh, but not really impressive. Uh, lyrics are just more of the same shot kind of lyrics. And really that's, that's what Eminem is lyrically. He's just a shock ly lyricist. He's the hip hop version of Marilyn Manson per se, which, Ooh, I'm sure I just possibly upset some people there. Anybody I did upset either doesn't know or doesn't realize or doesn't care the fact that Eminem and Marilyn Manson even teamed up at one point. Um, I'm not some of the cases of the uh, of the shock lyrics in here I'm not overly fond of them especially when it gets into talking about not naughty children touching no not a fan of that um, even if in this particular case it's being done to Eminem who's supposed to be the kid in this particular case it, the way these lyrics are being presented and even then I'm still not cool with it you know it's you know um I find it a little too off color uh I do like this song basically though um only because lyrically it kind of backpedals a lot of the album at this point you know after talking a lot of shit about, you know, all the different drugs and all the killing people and stuff like that, it's kind of nice to have a song towards the end where he kind of backpedals in one of the verses saying, you know, guys, I've never actually done any of this stuff. You know, even related when he's talking, all the drugs he talks about, he even says, you know, I've never done any of these drugs. I've only done these drugs. You know, that, that kind of thing, you know, it just to me, it's kind of it's that song that lets you know that lets you in on the joke. Uh, Bad Meets Evil. This one, well, it's presented to kind of have this, like, whole story-wise, kind of have, like, this whole country cowboy villain kind of vibe going on. Le uh, musically, it sounds more Latin. Uh, the guitar style sound more like they would belong in a, uh... I don't even want to say, like, maybe in a movie like Desperado, I guess, something like that, you know, like, doesn't have, doesn't have that cowboy kind of vibe to it, it's more of the native Mexican kind of vibe, I guess, I, I don't have a better way of saying that, I'm really sorry, I know it doesn't sound great. And then um, after that, we get into the last track, which is Still Don't Give a Fuck, which is basically a part two to Don't Give a Fuck. And it's just uh, not, a, not a bad tune. Uh, continuation works. The whole way around with this album, I personally, for me, I could put it on maybe once a year, get a chuckle out of it, not listen to it again after that. Would I recommend this? Well, if you're into rap, sure. You know, if you're looking for some rap that as a white person you can sing, go ahead. Yeah, that's great. You know. Kind of sing. I mean, once again, lyric content is not exactly appropriate or family friendly. Um, yeah, it is what it is. That's pretty much all I got to say about this album. I... Yeah. Let me know what you think. That's what the comment section is for. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell for notifications. Uh, 
link below that will take you to Patreon. Peace, love, take care.